it, it's supposed to be for youthful faith, Madison. Whereas my acupuncture place that I come to, down the street from the sand factory. So whenever I go to the sand factory, I try to take at least two hours off to go eat lunch. But before lunch, I come here and I get acupuncture. So I'm here. We're gonna do facial re rejuvenation. And my right hand always fucking gets like frozen and it gets stuck. I hate it. So I could get acupuncture to de stress it. It's gonna be intense. Oh, yeah, wrinkle right there. It's been about 40 minutes. Yes, it's 30 to 40 minutes usually. Give it 10 meters, around 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, now let's go hustle. Let's get some money in LA. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. We're going to go have lunch with the vegan food god reviewer. Like, he's the god of reviewing vegan food. He doesn't lie to you. He's very forward with what's good and what's not. And he's just so raw when he's reviewing food. I love him. His name is Jay. We're gonna go eat vegan food with Jay. Yeah, it's not worth getting a ticket over not paying for your parking meter. Just pay for your parking meter or else you're gonna have to pay like $50. Pay the fucking meter in LA. And don't be jaywalking in LA. Don't you dare jaywalk in my city. Yeah. Here we oh, she's a Japanese chola. <laughs> Look at his tattoo. Where are you from? Who are you? <laughs> Tell me who are you? You're a hairstyler. Yeah. <gasps> What's your Instagram? Uh, my name Abelson. Abel, A-B-E-L underscore uh, S-O-N. He is a sandal tattoo owner. Oh my God, <laughs> let me see you get a video of me. That is crazy. Yeah, you sent me that a while back, yeah. right? Yeah, I got it done right before you doing today. I'm meeting up for lunch with my homie Jay. He's like the guru of vegan food reviewing here in LA. So take it from here, Jay. Tell him who you are. What's up? My name is Sacalini with a vegan and her, and we are here in Highland Park, back on York, to eat some vegan sushi at the plant lab with the homegirl, one and only San Juan. And you know what's crazy? I kept thinking about the, the truck, okay? Because yeah. I had it like three weeks ago. I kept thinking about it, but I couldn't figure out what the name was. And then randomly, by the universe grave, you had done a review so on it. It was my latest review of all of Highland Park. His latest review was, the last quote is this truck right here, which is all vegan Japanese, which is all vegan <laughs> Japanese food. So good job on that one, Jay. Bye, bye, bye. Let's eat together, Jay. I can't wait to eat the curry. I hope you brought the munchies. This is the Mary Curry. Mary Curry with, I believe it has some avocado. The top part is shrimp, right? <gasps> shrimp, shrimp. And this is supposed to be the, what is it? The little caviar ball. Caviar ball. Right, yeah. But it's all vegan though. Oh my God, let's munch it. And this is Japanese curry with chicken. Oh, oh I'm gonna get one of those. Why you gotta do that? <laughs> oh, it Yeah, I painted it here. Hold on. Tell me your name again. Don. Don. Don King. Oh, I remember, dude. Yes, yes. Your your mom has a 200 here. Oh, I know him. He's a collector. Of, uh, his mom's a collector and him too. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Take care, guys. Bye. I don't even know the names, but I just know they're all vegan. And um, I can eat them. Look, it doesn't even look vegan. How crazy is that? This is my everyday food whenever I go out and eat. You can't even tell it's vegan. It just looks, it's just regular food, you know? With the difference that it might look like meat, but it's not meat. It might look like fish, but it's not fish. I mean, just like a fish. A fish is a big, long thing, and it becomes a little ass square. So it's magic. You're making magic. Hi. Hi. What's up? Oh, Both of you girls. Thank you. That's a little stony. Jay, it was good seeing you, Jay. Have fun on your trip. I just started making my dolls and I believe in them so much that I believed in every single product and step that I was creating in the process of my development to becoming San Juan. 
what I think about whenever I go and buy something, I think about, okay, why would I want to buy this? What does it mean? What does it represent? What am I getting out of this product that I'm buying? And what are they going to do to my mental health? Or what are they going to do to my emotional state of mind? So when I make my dolls, I give them a meaning. I give them a life. I give them a story that's relatable to every single human being that loves my art. So they're not just dolls. They're dolls with a meaning, with a story, and they all represent something. Heartbreak, depression, sadness, happiness, envy, jealousy, making money, leaving a fucked up relationship. Every doll represents a moment in everyone's life. And they're like therapy, my dolls. They're therapeutical. So there's girls that buy, let's say maybe there's a girl that comes to my gallery that only buys softy. Softy represents leaving a bad boy to go chase your career and your dreams. You know, so there's a girl that gravitates towards that. So in the creation of my brand, I wanted my brand to be, to be meaningful and to have different images that represent, like I said, a different emotion. So each doll has a name and each doll represents an emotion. And then from there, I start creating. I start. I start to create a relationship with my viewer, and it's not just a brand. It's me, my life, my story. I never even knew that there was people that related to what I'm going through, to what I've been through, to the things that I've felt. And now, as my brand keeps developing, as my name San Juan keeps developing, I realize that we all go through the same, through the same moments in in our lifetime. In our, in our respective worlds, in whatever social statuses we're in, in whatever cities we live in, we all go through the same thing, just differently. Different house, different body, different look, different ethnicity, different lifestyle. But you go through heartbreak, you go through sadness, you go through depression, you go through freaking sad little crybaby moments. So I was able to target my audience through my emotion and through making useful, wearable art. So my products, I don't call them products. To me, they are my, my art prints. They are prints of my artwork that you're able to buy at different price points. Like a girl could walk into my gallery and buy a $5 sticker. Or a guy could walk into my gallery and buy a $700 purse. There's all kinds of price points. That too comes from me wanting to be reachable and accessible to everyone that wants to own my art. But... When I created my brand, I wanted to know what I like to know whenever I buy something. Why would I want to buy that? What is it going to do for me? How am I going to feel? So why would somebody want to buy your shirt? What does it represent? Just because you put your name on it? No. Why would this human being want to spend their hard-earned money on you? Why would someone want to rock this purse with this doll? It took me 11 years to make my brand pop. But then prior to that, I've been drawing since I was nine years old. So it's been about 20 years doing my art every day of my life. So it didn't just fall into my lap. Ta-da! Oh, I made a bag. No. It's been 20 years. So if I was to have to go back to the middle of nothing, to the beginning and lose everything, I would have to go 20 years back in time to be able to start all over again. But why would somebody want to buy your brand? What do you represent? What is the meaning of your brand? What is the meaning of your eyelash company? What is the meaning of what you're trying to sell to another human being that works so hard for their money? Because they're about to let go of their hard-earned money to buy your product. Why? You got to have a meaning to it. We're in Glendale Galleria. I'm about to go buy some shoes real quick. This reminds me. Oh, my God. I met this Armenian guy one time, right, when I was at Glendale Galleria. I meet this Armenian guy, and we agreed to go out. So he's like, okay, I'm going to go pick you up. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. Pick me up. He comes in his G-Wagon Mercedes to pick me up in East LA, right, where I live. And I was, dude, this was maybe like 10 years ago. I was so little. I get in the car, and then he tells me, so where do you want to go? And I'm like, all right, well, let's go to the movies. I'm thinking we're on a date. And you know what he tells me? We're not going to the fucking movies. What the fuck? This is not what I picked you up for. 
okay, so where do you want to go? He's like, we're going to go get a room. Oh and I'm like, hold on, let me get my ticket. And I'm like, no, I don't want to get a room. I want to go to the movie. Let's go eat somewhere. He's like, you think I picked you up to go watch a movie? You've never been with a boss like me. You've never been in a car like this. You've never been with somebody like me. I'm going to drop you off. He fucking busted a U-turn. We were about to get on the freeway on Atlantic on the 60, right? He gets on the, he doesn't even get on the freeway. He goes and does a U-turn on Atlantic, takes me back to my street and drops me off. Dude, that was the last time I ever dated an Armenian. I was so mad. All right. But you know what? It made me want to fucking get it going. It made me want to get my hustle cracking. Like, all right. He disrespected me because he knew that I was a poor L.A. woman. So I never again want to feel like that. I never again want to feel like a poor fucking bitch that a man could just fucking walk all over talk because about, he, he's better than me. Talk about how you balance your masculine feminine, feminine energy. How do I... Oh, first of all, stuff like that. That really pissed me off. And I was being a girl right there, you know? I was being a girl. I was so happy. I was going to go on a date. Maybe, maybe it was foolish of me to think that that guy could look at me and take me serious, you know? Maybe I was just being a dumb fucking East LA Mexican bitch thinking that he was gonna actually take me serious and take me on a date, you know? Maybe it was my dumb self. But I felt very disrespected when he told me that. Mm -hmm. So that was literally one of the last times I ever... Oh, and then again, on Melrose, there was this guy that used to live on Melrose. We were both like 19. He had a Mercedes. I had a little Honda that would overheat. One time I went to go see him, and he was like, huh, your Honda, they can steal in 15 minutes. My Mercedes, they'll steal in two hours. Why do you have to tell me that? You know why he was telling me that? He was telling me that to be offensive, to be disrespectful. Like, you have a bucket. I have a Mercedes. Okay, so what do you want me to do about it? I'm sorry I can't afford a Mercedes yet. Now we got a Bentley, bitch. I haven't bought shoes in a long time. My last pair of shoes were these and I already fucked them up. I used to buy shoes a lot before. Mission aborted. They didn't have the shoes that I wanted. Hi! Oh my god, they put a fucking light line in there. Para cuando vengan te las das las cajitas. I'm gonna leave these lunch boxes here at TCI Supply where I get all my box supplies. So when you pull up, you have to buy something or else they're not gonna give you shit, all right? You have to buy, I don't know, some alcohol, lemon force. <gasps> this is my favorite. Oh, let me smell it. Oh, some lemon cleaner. It smells so bomb. Ooh, Marveloso. I love smelling disinfectant. Oh, it smells so bomb. <gasps> lemon disinfectant. Oh, let's get fucked up. I'm gonna leave Emma, the boss lady here at TCI Supply. Okay, Emma, te voy a dejar una, dos y tres loncheritas. Pero, no puedes venir por ahí nada más llevártela. No, 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 no. Tienes que apoyar a Emma en tu negocio. Tienes que comprar unos ganchos, marcadores, navajas, una escoba. Tienes que comprar algo. No puedes nada más llegar y decir, oh, quiero la cajita gratis de San Juan. Compra algo. Come on, no seas baratita. Ok, Emma, van a entrar una por familia. No sean, no sean mentirosas, ¿eh? Una por familia y ya se las dejas que se la lleven, pero tienen que comprar algo, ¿ok? okay. Estos son para ellas. Te voy a dar dos más. Cinco en total, Emma. ¿Ok? ¿Estamos de acuerdo? Perfecto. Emma, Emma aquí tiene a dos sandals, look. Uy, ya están bien viejas. Tiene yeah. aquí, tiene aquí a la little stranger. Y acá tiene a la, uy, oh, tiene a la softie. Pero ya le mocharon la cara. Te voy a traer más nuevas, no te preocupes. Te voy a traer más nuevas. I'm in front of my mural that I did here in downtown LA off of Los Angeles. And what street are we on? And 18th Street. I did a really, really big mural with a doll. 
and she's playing with coin. They're Bitcoin, right? Because Bitcoin's kind of crazy right now. And the bureau says, I'm going to make my money in LA. I've been broke in LA. I'm going to make my money in LA. And no one's pushing me out. I'm here to stay. That is a manifesto to myself. A manifesto to not leave LA, to not quit this big city, this beautiful big city that I come from. To not leave it and to try everything in my fucking power to make it in this city without fucking quitting just before I even got started. To not quit this big city that many people come to, searching for opportunity, just because it's too hard or there's too many people. So fucking what? I get up, I grind it, I fucking shower, I wake up and I go to work every single fucking day. This is the city that my mother placed me in. I am from LA, I am a fucking LA native. I was born and raised in LA, East LA to be specific. And I love this city. This city gives me so much fucking hustle. When I wake up, I know there's people already out there grinding. I know there's somebody else that wants to be a painter, that wants to be a big fucking shot caller in LA. And that motivates me. What's up, bro? Do we look cool, do we look cool? <laughs> All right, let's do it. See you later. Goodbye. We're pumping gas in Huntington Park, California. Because I was on freaking empty already. My freaking gas was at its lowest point right now. So we're putting gas and then we're gonna go to the stamp factory in Cudahy, California. Because from now on, I'm gonna open the factory every single weekend, every single Saturday and Sunday. I promise to open the factory. It's been closed for Gosh, for a whole month or two, but I'm gonna open from now on. I love meeting all my collectors. I love meeting all the go-getters, hustlers, and money makers that love to collect my art, that love to own sand dogs. My dogs are made for all the people out there grinding, searching for better days. People dream of LA. I'm from LA. I'm from LA. So, if you're from LA, get it together. And if you're in LA from another country or town, Come on, you're in the city of dreams. Everyone can make it here, everyone.